News Business Horticultural Trades Association forecasts the value of plant sales lost during the lockdown could be £687 million by the end of June Monday, 13 April 2020, 6 a.m. Updated Monday 13 April 2020. 6.01 a.m. Hillier is among the garden centre and nursery businesses hoping to survive the coronavirus lockdown. Photo, Hillier, a costly burning of one's capital is peculiar to the nursery trade. Edwin Lawrence Hillier said this during the Second World War, after the nursery founded in 1864 by his father, also Edwin, had to destroy its ornamental crop and plant vegetables to supply the national dig for victory effort. Today, his grandson Robert Hillier, chairman of Hillier's, is trying to stay positive in the face of what look like even more overwhelming odds. Easter is traditionally the time when garden centers cash in on the spring gardening boom, but the Horticultural Trades Association forecasts the value of plant sales lost during the lockdown could be £687 million by the end of June. That's without counting the profits businesses make from their cafes and other products, scented candles, greetings cards, ornaments, sign up to our daily newsletter the i-newsletter cut through the noise and while coffee shops, pubs and high street retailers will be able to reopen the moment the government sounds the all clear on coronavirus, garden centers will, very little stock with no market for bedding plants until the spring of 2021. This puts the wholesale growers, who supply plants to garden centers, supermarkets and DIY stores, in a very precarious situation. Robert Hillier is staying optimistic, photo, Hillier why gardening businesses are so worried George Blackwell has seen both sides of the industry, as a grower for the wholesale market and as a garden center owner in Swindon, Wiltshire. Technology has enabled bedding plants to be produced on an industrial scale, he says. Any failed delivery to a customer results in a disposal to the compost heap, because the next batch must progress. The financial implications are immense. There have been suggestions that the growers and garden centers could supply supermarkets. But Blackwell tells I, it's difficult for them and for the garden centers, to change tack, you have to balance how much money you are losing against the cost of clawing something back. He points out that in the Netherlands, where horticulture is an important national industry, the government will probably bail out the nurseries, but that's unlikely to happen here. Robert Hillier is also concerned. I know people who are sitting on £7 million or £8 million worth of bedding plants, who supply retailers like B&Q, he says. The bedding season lasts a short time. By June or July, it's all over. Some independents fare better in a way, the coronavirus crisis has turned the clock back. Small independent nurseries, run by a couple or an individual can survive a period of self-isolation, because they work in a fairly isolated environment all the time. Take Neil and Catherine Wallsgrove, who own Pepperpot Herbs, near Alton, Hampshire. They are now offering mail order only, and did a year's worth of business in the first 10 days of the lockdown, thanks to the demand for vegetables and herbs. They even had to temporarily suspend online ordering because they'd run out of packaging. Others, such as Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants owned by Hampshire-based Rosie and Rob Hardy, Helen Picton's Old Court Nurseries near Malvern in Worcestershire, and the Blue Bell Arboretum and Nursery owned by the Vernon family in Derbyshire, have all been open for online orders because they could easily make the switch. The big operators don't have that flexibility, but Hillier Nurseries are in a better position than many. It has moved some stock from their garden centers to their nurseries in Hampshire and donated bedding plants to local care homes. Read more read more coronavirus lockdown, nature helps your mood, so forgive my jealousy while I'm stuck in a flat with no garden we started with a bit of a sell off, says the chairman, marking down shrubs. And the Easter eggs all went to hospitals to be given to NHS workers. I am 77 and I have never known anything like this.
It never occurred to me that gardens and garden centers would be closed. It is particularly sad to think that we should have been celebrating our 75th anniversary of exhibiting at the Chelsea Flower Show this year. Like all gardeners, though, he's an optimist. I'm the fourth generation to run this business, the fifth generation is already involved. I hope the sixth generation will be too. If we've been in business since 1864, hopefully we can survive a few more years. Let's block ads. Why?